Okay, this video we are going to do the theory on correction of errors and suspense. The good news is the theory is really what I have on the board here. Um, it will be worth 10 to 15 percent of your question. They're very, very particular with certain words have to be in the solution. So I'm going to go through that and I'll highlight some of them. Really, when it comes to this theory about accountancy, it, it really has to be spot on to give you the marks. It's where they kind of pull back the marks to distinguish between different grades. Okay, uh, the first thing we're going to look over there is your trial balance. Now, if you go back to your junior search, you did question one on paper two. And what you did was you would have done day books, you'd produce ledgers, and you'd produce trial balances. Now, at the very, very end, you would always be told if the trial balance balanced that your accounts were accurate or correct. So, the trial balance, first of all, you have to say it's a list of balances from the ledgers. Okay? It ensures accuracy. They want that word accuracy. So it ensures the accuracy of your double entry. So you're really just doing the trial balance to make sure you um, did your double entry correctly, that every debit had a corresponding credit. So it's completed before preparing the final accounts. Again, that has to be there. You would never do um, your ledgers and then just go straight away into your final accounts. You'd have to make sure that they were correct because if not, your final accounts won't be right. You should have the same total of debits and credits. So you're just saying the total on your debit side should equal the total on your credit side. And you actually have to state that. Under double entry bookkeeping, keep mentioning double entry because the trial balance is to do with double entry bookkeeping. Every debit entry should have a corresponding credit entry. Now to get your marks about why the trial balance is important or what is a trial balance, you actually need the five statements there. Okay, errors revealed by the trial balance. So if I did a trial balance and it didn't balance, what type of mistakes would it show me that I've done? First of all, it might be a max mistake. So you did an addition or subtraction. Number two, double entry. So when you're doing your double entry, you just put it on the debit, forgot to put it on the credit. So only entered on the debit or on the credit. And this placed entry, it was entered on the incorrect side. So you did, um, you had an, an entry, you knew that it was to go on the debit and on the credit side, but by mistake you put on the debit twice, or maybe you put on the credit twice. So you have to say a maths error, a double entry error, or a misplaced um, entry. Okay, this one here came up, I think it was 2018, you need to check that. So it said, what is a suspense account? So a suspense account is used when there is a mistake. You have to use that word mistake. So you use suspense uh, if there's a mistake in your accounts and it prevents the trial balance from balancing. So you're saying there's a mistake and how did you know there's a mistake? You went to do your trial balance, you went to add up your debit and your credit side and it didn't add up. So there's a mistake and you're going to use your suspense to make the trial balance balance because we know you can't prepare your final accounts until that trial balance balances. So Again, it's used when there is a mistake. You need that word mistake in the account and it prevents, again, you need the word try balance from balancing. Now, what happens is when you went to do, do your try balance, you added up your debit side and you added up your credit side and it didn't balance. So what you do is the difference or the mistake between the debit and the credit side is entered into suspense account. So for example, it's kind of like cheating in a way. I added up my debit side and it added up to 10,000. I added up my credit side, it added up to 9,000. So I know my accounts, there's a mistake somewhere, but I really need to prepare my final accounts. So I have 10 on one side, I have nine on the other side. So what I do is I just add another 1,000 to something on the credit side to make it balance. So the difference between the debit and credit side is entered in a suspense account. So I open up the suspense account Put it on the credit side and say, I've 1,000 mistakes somewhere. And the errors, uh, and you leave it there until you discover where your mistakes are. But what that allows you to do, it allows you to prepare your final accounts. Then when you find your mistakes, you can fix your final accounts. So the difference between the debit and credit side is entered into suspense account until the errors are discovered. And it's very important, you will not leave the suspense account there indefinitely. You're just doing it so you can prepare the final accounts, then you will uh, remove it once the errors have been discovered. So uh, it's, it, you use it in order to allow the trial balance to balance. And we know we need it to balance 
to do our final accounts. Now the errors are then corrected through the suspense and the balance is eliminated. So as you fix up your mistakes, you'll slowly get rid of the balance and suspense and it disappears because the mistakes have been found. Okay, go through this again. So suspense is used if there's a mistake in your double entry. Okay, so just a mistake in the trial balance, it's not balancing. We can't do our final accounts till it balances. So what we decide to do is we'll create an account called a suspense account where we will put the mistake in to make sure the accounts balance. So the difference between the debit and credit side is entered into the suspense account until the errors are located, okay, or discovered, and it allows the trial balance to balance. Now what happens is, as you find the errors, the balance in your suspense start, starts to disappear until it's completely eliminated and you've fixed all the mistakes. So the relevant errors are corrected through the suspense and the balance is eventually eliminated. Okay, watch out for that one because that wasn't well answered. Right, number four, errors that will not be shown up by the trial balance. What this means is you have made mistakes in your accounts, but your trial balance is still balanced. So you think your accounts are perfect, but there's still mistakes in it. Now, if you remember back to your junior search, sometimes you've got the debit and the credit to actually have the correct figure, the same figures. And when we corrected it, we said, no, your accounts are wrong because you did something wrong somewhere through it. And this is the same here. The debit and credit side add up, but they're actually not correct. Now, with this one here, you have six entries um, that would cause a trial balance to be incorrect, even though it balances. Now, you have to be able to name these, explain them, or they could give you the names and then explain them. So, either way, these have to be learned off by heart. Okay? Error of omission. The word omission in English means to omit or to leave out. So, this type of error it means you completely forgot an entry. So you didn't enter it on the debit, you didn't enter it on the credit, it's just not in your books. So the entries have been completely left out. There was nothing entered on the debit, nothing entered on the credit, so your account's still balanced, but you're missing an entry. Now that's the easiest one. If you're given a choice which one to talk about, that's the easiest one to talk about. Now, error of principle. This one here is that you have entered it, in the right um in the right debit you've put a debit entry and you've put a credit entry but you've put it in the wrong type of account so to make the, to explain this i'm going to just say we'll have a look at the example first of all and then we'll go back to the theory so just say if i had repairs to my van now if i was repairing my van what you should have there is you should have repairs and you should have the bank so your repairs go up and your bank goes down but by mistake, I didn't put it in the repairs account. I put it in the delivery van account. So what I did was, I entered it on the debit, and I entered it on the credit, but I put it in the wrong class of account. So with the principal, you entered it on the correct side, but you put it in the wrong class of account. Okay, error of commission. Now th this one I'm gonna explain again using the example. First of all, just say that you bought goods from P. Hughes, but you put it in that you bought it from A. Hughes. So you put it in a creditor's account, but you put it in the wrong person's account. So A. Hughes instead of P. Hughes. So you post it, posting it to the wrong account. So it's not the class of account. The class of account is right. It should have been in a creditor's account, but you just put it under the wrong name. So it's posting to the wrong account. It's the correct side of the correct type of account, but you just put it under the wrong name. Compensating, if something compensates, um, it, it kind of fixes itself. So an error of equal value cancel each other out. Okay, so a payment of 600 for wages, you put it in a 60. So it's still, you put it on the debit, you put it on the credit, so everything balances, but you just put in the wrong amount. So that's compensating error. The, diff the most difficult thing here is remembering which example goes with which title. Errors of original entry. Original entry goes back to your junior search where you have um, books of first entry and it just means in the books of first entry you put in the wrong figure initially to start the accounts off so you've carried through the wrong figure. So just say here sales at 300 in credit you put it in as 30 instead of 300. So you originally put it in wrong in the books of first entry and carried through. 
complete reverse sum of entry. So say, for example, if you paid ESB bill, you would say uh, ESB is on the debit and the bank goes down in the credit. But you did it on the complete opposite sides. So you would have said bank money came in and ESB money went out. Okay, uh, so again, you've done the complete reversal. You had the correct two accounts, but you put it on the wrong side of the two accounts. So the debit entry is on the credit side and the credit entry is on the debit side. Again, just your theory here. You have to know these inside out. They could ask you from the exam, can you give an example of one of these entries from the adjustments that you've done? Or they could ask you to just um, explain them. Now remember, if you're explaining these in the exam, you explain them and you have to give an example to get your full marks where relevant, okay? So again, error of omission, error of principle. That's the hardest one. So just remember, principle, you use the wrong type of account. Use repairs and motor vehicles. Always use that example. Error of commission, that just means you got the two names mixed up. Compensating errors, again, with this one, you just put the wrong figure in. Compensating, maybe use the word calculating, compensating, wrong figure went in. Errors of original entry was in your books of first entry. You did everything correct, but you put the wrong figure in. So this is the wrong figure in the ledgers, but this is the wrong figure in the original books of entry. And the complete reversal, you have two right accounts, but you put them on the wrong side of both accounts.